my wife Veronica, and I lived side by side for many years. I was the breadwinner while she ran the home and took care of the children. But then the kids grew up and went off on their own, and my wife decided it was time to go back to work. Frankly, I was glad that she was finally rediscovering herself after all these years. Little did I know how deeply she would dig in. Veronica had always had a drive to excel at whatever she did. That was why she had once decided to quit her job to become the best mother in the world. And now she set her sights on achieving high results at work and quickly climbing the corporate ladder. After another promotion, she took on the role of regional director for her company. I couldn't have predicted the negative impact this would have on our family. Her newfound way of commanding everyone was at first irritating and later infuriating. Imagine having to coordinate every action with Mistress Veronica, not only at work, but also at home. No matter what anyone did, it was never right. Our children visited less often and my nerves were frayed. Veronica had completely abandoned her domestic duties and repeatedly tried to taunt me about how her salary was now higher than mine. These were all presented as jokes, but these jokes wounded my male ego, and my wife seemed oblivious. That's when I exploded in response to her sarcastic taunts. Of course, our fellow director didn't appreciate my answers, because only she had the right to joke like that. This led to arguments. I was often exhausted from these arguments and didn't know what to do next. And then one day Veronica came back from work and announced that there was a company New Year's party the following week and I had to go with her to show her colleagues that she wasn't just a good boss, but also a wonderful wife. Veronica, our relationship was hanging by a thread. And you want me to go to an event with you and play the role of a happy husband? You've forgotten our home and all the effort you put into raising our children only to strain your relationship with them. Even with me, you treat me like I'm your subordinate, and yet you're worried about what your colleagues will think of you. Of course, they don't know what's really going on in your family. So you won't go, my wife said coldly. A week passed, and my wife went to the party alone. She came back late, but didn't come into the bedroom. She spent the whole night in the kitchen, and I was sure she was feigning pain. I was determined not to give in. I wanted her to think about her behavior, and you know what, it worked. After her solo outing to the company event, my wife became mellow again. My old Veronica returned, and my happiness knew no bounds. The house was peaceful and quiet again. And after a few weeks, there was a photo report from the company event on her website. I saw the photos before her and decided to tease her, to act a little jealous. Let me tell you, she was in all the pictures with some guy that I saw and I understood immediately. She would get a little worried that her husband was jealous. She would try to justify herself, be confused, say that I was joking and that she only needed me. Then I would smile and say that I only needed her too. Veronica would realize it was a joke and I would give her a bouquet of flowers. That was my plan. I would order the flowers, wait for her to get home from work, and as soon as she entered the apartment, I would start. She's here, and I'm looking at pictures from your company event. Who's that guy who was with you all night? Is there something going on between you two? I paused, expecting an answer from Linda, but she remained silent. So I continued. You don't have to answer. I already know there's something between you two. I paused again, but my wife just lowered her eyes to the floor. Why are you silent? I started to falter because Veronica's silence was beyond my script. I thought maybe something had happened to her, and here I was with my jokes. But then my wife started talking. I'm sorry, Len, I was hoping you wouldn't find out. Your words before the company event hurt and embarrassed me, and then there was the alcohol. 
I completely lost control, and after what happened, I felt so terrible and ashamed. We all drank, and those crude competitions started, and I got carried away. My colleague led me into a storage room without saying anything and just lifted up my skirt. Another colleague followed and said that wishes come true on New Year's Eve, and he had a wish about our boss. He took me from behind, just like the first one, and she told me the details of her affair. I wasn't prepared for such an end to an innocent prank. It was boiling inside me. I told her to leave. Get her stuff and get out. Len, where should I go? Let's talk. Yes, there is nothing for us to talk about. You knew that infidelity is something I despise and will never forgive, but you went through with it anyway. You didn't care that you might ruin 25 years of our life together. All you cared about was your wounded pride. What's there to talk about? We'll get through this together, she said. How can this be fixed? I yelled. Pack up and leave. On the eve of the previous new year, December 30th, Veronica was left on the street. She was ashamed to turn to our children, and she had nowhere else to go. Frankly, I didn't care. She should have gone to the people she was cheating with. But they had their own families, and they certainly weren't waiting for her on New Year's. Our children came to see me, and I told them everything. They were shocked by their mother's actions, and Veronica ended up spending the holidays alone. I didn't want to cover for her, and I answered honestly when people asked, Where's Veronica? Or, How's Veronica? Word spread quickly in our small town. Eventually, even the CEO of the company heard about this unpleasant story. He was a principled man and fired all three for their inappropriate relationships that violated ethical standards. So, one woman's momentary lapse and alcohol drastically changed the lives of many.